Okay, we're in Springville, Utah, and uh, we're getting ready to go out and hunt geodes way out in the desert. And uh, we're just gonna clean our windshields. And uh, look at that big, beautiful mountain up there. Okay. So just to give you an idea where we're located, uh, we're off on Springville, uh, just to the right of that lake. We go around the lake and we travel about three hours and 15 minutes, over about 55 miles of uh, gravel and dirt road. Okay, so here we are, way out in the desert. This is the Pony Express Trail. We're gonna follow it for quite some time. We're gonna go way over, way beyond those mountains over there. So we got quite a trip ahead of us to get to the geode beds. So we're following the Pony Express Trail, the original one, and it was about to, uh, ran from Missouri to California, and they used to catch these wild uh, horses out there, and these horses were very strong and very sturdy, and it helped them to ride the trails. Lots of sheep out there. Way out in the middle of nowhere. Oh, wow. Okay, so what we have here are wild horses. And some of the people are trying to get out to see if they can get near them. But we're on our way to Budway Geode Beds. I mean Dugway Geode Beds. Okay, we're out here in the middle of the Utah desert looking at these beautiful flowers out here. So more wild horses, huh? They say we're out here. About 200. About 200. Wild horses spread all over thousands of miles. Big rich. miles of dirt road and finally we're getting to the Dugway Geodeds over there. Dugway Geodeds. Okay. Heading out here took a lot, 50 miles of dirt and gravel road. Rocky shaking us to pieces. But those of them will drive over there and find a spot hunt for geodes. So the geode beds. Okay, Commodore, we're finally here, huh? Yeah. <laughs> we got lost and it took a long time to find here. This is where we were at last year, or yeah, last year. So these are the geode beds all around here. And we're gonna go looking. And we have some tools to help us do that. And uh, these are the better tools for trying to find uh, geodes, just scraping through the stuff that's already been dug up over here and then putting them in buckets when we find them, if we find them. Okay. We'll find them. okay we'll so find Commodore them. out here, and Commodore and I are out here looking for geodes and he found one and I found one. Doesn't look like much right now, but uh, if we were to wash it off a little bit and uh, look at it, it would be uh, be what we're looking for. We're looking for the, this size and a bit bigger, you know, from this being the smallest. You can find all kinds of small ones, but we want the bigger ones. Okay, what a beautiful day out here. Hunting for geodes. So I guess we've been digging for a couple of hours, but uh, we found some geodes and uh, we have to clean them up a little bit and then take the uh, tile saw and cut them. But we've got these nice ones here as well. Let's see if you can see those. These are pretty big compared to, let's see, compared to this one. These are pretty nice sized geodes. Okay, so we've been out here for, oh, I guess about an hour. Been digging around the tops of these hills here, and uh, other people are out digging. And this pit is kind of filled up with water since the last time we were here. But here's some of the geodes. Here are some of the geodes that I have found. And um, small geodes, they don't look like much, just kind of balls. And, uh, but wash them up, they look, they look quite a bit better. And uh, some of the bigger ones, and, uh, whoops, there he goes. And this one, that's a baby back. Let's see. Yeah, baby back. That is definitely a geode. Okay, 
Okay, Commodore, where have we been today? The Dugway Geode Beds. And uh, how long have we been there? I don't know, I forgot. About, about seven hours, <laughs> yeah. six, seven hours. And we found buckets. Don't know if you're gonna see them back there. Buckets um, of geodes. And we gotta get out of here because it's getting, getting toward evening and we have a long way to go on a dirt road in mountains. All right. Love the Utah desert. Mm -hmm. Can't tell it, but we're up pretty high. And uh, no, you can't tell it all. That looks flat and that's a long way down there. Um, but we're looking at across the valley, heading back home. And uh, boy, that's a big, long valley. Wish you could tell it from this video. Hmm. Fifty miles of this. <laughs> wow. These are wild mustangs. So here's some of the geodes that I brought back from Dugway Geode Beds in Utah. And um, I've washed some of them off to get some of that outer white material off of them. And you can see how, um, what they look like. They're kind of unique, the design that they, they have. And um, just interesting to see what's happening when you cut them open. I got them from different parts of the pit. There are three or four or five big large pits out there. And uh, depending upon which pit I got them from, you can kind of see um, that they are a bit different. When you cut them open, they may be solid inside. Um, they may be hollow inside. Um, this one's kind of unusual. <laughs> Not sure what we're gonna find when we cut this one open. And, uh, and this one is especially unusual. I mean, it looks like it, these were gas bubbles that formed inside a molten rock, and you can kind of see there's a bubble here, and it might have crystals in it, and same here, and here, and over here, and um, and it's really like two on top of each other, or one on top of one another, and uh, so this is what this one looks like. But uh, again, you never know what you're going to see when you until you cut these open. Interesting things. Here's a geode, and you never know when you're get it, what you're gonna get when you look inside. But um, split this and open with a hammer, and you can kind of see what's inside this one. Should get little sparklies on some of them. This one is even more sparkly. And it even has some crystals in it. But these geodes are not as good as the ones we found last year. And they wore out our saw blade. So we're going to have to get another one. So that we can finish doing the rest of them. But again, this geode here is quite interesting. With all the bubbles it has, trap gases in this particular rock. Wish we had a saw blade that would cut this open. Okay, we got a new blade, a diamond bit blade. The other one was totally wasted and um, got through this huge, well, to me, very large uh, geode. And uh, very interesting, very interesting thing. Shiny on the inside. Hope you can see that, all that shiny glitter stuff. But we'll just keep working on some more geodes. Superior, what are you doing? Well, I'm cutting geodes. <laughs> okay. Okay.
Okay, so can you see those? Wow. So they're kind of shiny, glittery. Very pretty. Some of them. A lot of them are what I'd call junk geodes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you like doing that, huh? Um, I like finding them and I like finding those that are worth keeping. And this is worth keeping. And this would probably go to my friend, uh, Susan Dunn, um, in, who's a fellow hiker in uh, South Carolina. <laughs> oh, right. by the way, take mm -hmm. a look at this other big one. I didn't think I would get him taken care of. Wow. But um, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see how glittery that is. That one, uh, I couldn't get through even the smallest one until Commodore brought another blade back. It was mm -hmm. a diamond, uh, diamond tip blade and uh, it cuts right through it. So anyway, we're just using a uh, tile saw, a cheap tile saw. We've got it uh, Lowe's for I think about $55, $60. Excellent. All right. Okay. Okay, so I'm done cutting my geodes. Commodore still has to cut his. I have left a few of mine, the little ones, in the bucket. And uh, Commodore still has quite a few in his buckets. All right. Sure are interesting. Millions and millions of years old, we assume. No human being has ever seen the inside of these geodes. We're seeing them for the first time. I think that is so interesting. <laughs>